Hey nerds, what's up? Today I'm gonna actually try to answer the question, did Moash do anything wrong? See you after the jump. So let's be honest, no matter your opinion on the question now, when we first read that scene in Oathbringer where Moash kills Elokar, we were all gut punched. And in fact, I was extremely angry at Moash and did not know there was another opinion to be had except to hate Moash at that moment. But then I've stumbled across the subreddit Moash did nothing wrong and found that there are a decent amount of people who think otherwise. Judging by the respective numbers in these two subreddits, most people had the reaction I did on reading Oathbringer, but it did make me wonder, have we been too hasty? Should I dive into the other side and really get to know what the other side of the question is and maybe it'll change my opinion? So I went to the Moash Did Nothing Wrong subreddit and engaged with those fans and asked them to tell me their main reasons that Moash did nothing wrong. So we're gonna go through all those reasons today and at the end, you can find out my answer to did Moash do anything wrong? So let's dive in to what they said. Thank you to all the lovely people who engaged with me on that subreddit. They, well, some of them didn't engage that great, but some of them told me some really good, interesting points. And what I did is I boiled down all the points they said into their main six points that they told me about why they think Moash did nothing wrong. So those six points are, one, Kaladin betrayed Moash, not the other way around. Moash killed Elkar because he was the leader on the opposing side of the war. Anyone would have done it. Number three, Elkar sucks genocide, upholds the case system, etc. Number four, Moash's grandparents were killed and he deserves revenge. Number five, he's basically Kelsier, but portrayed in a different light. Number six, he's not a bad person because he helps the normal Parshendi. So right off the bat, I'm gonna actually cross off number six out of our discussion. Not because I disagree with it, but actually because I agree with it. Um, I don't think anyone on either side thinks Moash is this crazy villain, you know, cackling. Uh, mustache twisting. If you think that Moash is all bad, I feel like we're reading a different book. I don't think the question here is, is Moash this terrible person? I think is, did he do something wrong in killing Elkar the way he did? Is he going down a bad path? Uh, do we not like who he's becoming? Which is a different question than saying Moash is unequivocally all bad, black and white. So I don't think we really need to discuss six. I'm hoping we all agree on that, that we can see that Moash has a lot of sides to his personality. So let's start with number one. Moash didn't betray Kaladin. So I thought this was kind of an interesting point because we view that Moash betrayed Kaladin, but there is something to be said about Kaladin betraying Moash since he did sort of agree with him to kill Elkar and that's why he lost Syl for a little bit. So I can see how this point comes to pass. The reason I have a hard time feeling like it holds a lot of water is after my reread of Oathbringer, I realized that Moash views himself as having betrayed Kaladin. At the end of Words of Radiance, we have that scene where he's in the wagon and he's being pulled away and Moash is like, I can't believe I just tried to kill Kaladin. He's like going over and over, like I can't believe I did that. And it starts off in his viewpoints in Oathbringer the same way. He feels like he's a terrible person. He rips off his bridge four patch. He doesn't think he's worthy of it. He thinks he's done a great wrong and he's feeling really bad about himself. Now, of course, the way we perceive things isn't always the way that they are. So there's still an argument that Moash betrayed Kaladin but I don't think that that is the reason that Moash acts because Moash believes he has betrayed Kaladin. And because of that, he doesn't act out of revenge of Kaladin betraying him. I hope that makes sense. So that's why I think this one doesn't really work for me on getting Moash off the hook. Um, I think maybe if you're trying to look for, hey, Moash isn't as bad as you think, this could be a good argument. Like, hey, there was kind of betrayal on both sides. But as far as a motivation to kill Elikar, I feel like this one's pretty weak, particularly because of the way Moash laments his actions. Let's talk points two and four together. So these are a little conflicting because they give two different reasons for Moash killing Elikar. And I mean, they could exist together. He could have multiple reasons, but I do think the motivation is very different in both of them. And upon my reread, I think that Moash for sure kills Elikar out of revenge and not out of this idea that he is on the opposing force. Now we do know Moash has joined the Parshendi because he personally feels that all humans are worthless and don't deserve anything. And I think that's an interesting point is that Moash feels that he should join the Parshendi because he's a terrible person, Elikar's a terrible person, there's so few people. I think he even mentions like so few people like Kaladin that they don't deserve Roshar and that it should be given to the Parshendi. That motivation is very curious because it's very fatalistic. And so when he's killing Elikar, I don't really think it's 
because he's like, now I'm on the Parshendi side and that's gonna hurt them the most. I think Moash does have an understanding that Elkar is probably a hindrance to the Lethi cause more than anything. Um, and I know that Moash had no way to know that Elkar had abdicated or that he was trying to be a better person or even that he was saying the oaths, but I don't think it mattered to Moash. I don't think it was really that sort of tactical. I think it was pure revenge. And now the question becomes, is Moash right in his vengeance? Does he deserve vengeance against Elkar? And I'm gonna put a pin in that question because we're gonna come back to that at the end when I wanna talk about something else. So did Moash deserve his vengeance? That's a question. Point three, Elikar sucks. Look, is there an opposing argument to this? I don't think so. Like, I don't think anyone on the F Moash side believes that Elikar was some grand person. He wasn't. He was negligent and self-centered at best, cruel and genocidal at worst. He did nothing for the Alethi cause. He caused more problems than he solved. Um, I, don't, I don't think there's any argument there. None of us like Elikar in that way. So the question is, why do we even care that he died? Okay, we're gonna come back to that question too. It's tied into whether Moash deserved vengeance or not. Let's keep going. Finally, point five. Honestly, this was the point that shook me the most to my core, and it's definitely the point that changed my opinion on Moash the most. As many people do, I love Kelsier, but the argument that Moash is just a less charismatic version of him really hit hard. He's obsessed with status and taking down the status quo. He doesn't like the ruling class. He murders a very important leader. He doesn't mind using violence to get the job done. Sounds like both Kelsier and Moash. So why is Kelsier so much more loved than Moash? Are you starting to see a pattern? These three last questions I've asked and not answered are tied together. Honestly, after reading all of these Moash did nothing wrong subreddit answers, I started being very swayed toward their cause. I started thinking that, hey, Moash didn't do anything wrong. Have I been thinking of this the wrong way? And then I started my reread of Oathbringer. And once I did that, the answer became clear immediately. There is another thing that we have not considered in these arguments, the fourth wall. It's all about perspective. Perhaps if this was a textbook and not a fiction novel, we would be easier on Moash. In a textbook, things are seen from a bird's eye view. We see things from multiple perspective. We're not in people's heads. It's all about facts. And I think the arguments presented here are mostly factual. If we look at it from a non-emotional standpoint, Moash had motivations. He maybe deserved vengeance against Elikar. Elikar wasn't a good king. Um, Elikar was on the opposing side. He was like Kelsier trying to take down a ruling class. All of these things are very valid, but we see things through particular characters' perspectives and it isn't Moash and it isn't a non-emotional third person. The issue is, is that we have been in Kaladin's head most of the Stormlight Archive. And in fact, if I'm remembering correctly, we are only in Moash's head in Oathbringer. So we are automatically geared towards viewing Kaladin as our hero to identify with Kaladin and his emotions and want what Kaladin wants. And even more so, when you bring in the fact that Kaladin's story is very tied to Elikar's in Words of Radiance. In fact, one of my favorite moments in all of Words of Radiance, and maybe in most novels I've read, period, is that end of Words of Radiance where Syl comes rushing back as Kaladin says the words and it's in front of Elikar and he starts defending him. It's this grand moment. So in that moment, we as readers have become tied to Kaladin's desire to protect and save Elikar, whether or not he deserves it. We are emotionally tied to that moment, making it much harder when Elikar is starting to achieve something and we see that Kaladin's pushing it on and then he is killed. We are not impartial bystanders. We believe Kaladin, we are mostly seeing things from his point of view, which makes it more difficult for us to identify with Moash. Additionally, I think it matters a lot that this plot point happens in Oathbringer. Oathbringer is Dalinar's flashbacks. Dalinar's flashbacks are simply brutal and it is so brilliant that we had to rate to book three to see them because we have two books to really like Dalinar and believe in him as this great, good person. And then we see his past, which is just disgusting. And in fact, his past is the worst of any of these pasts. I mean, there's no question that Dalinar is a way worse person than Elkar. He's caused way more damage. The problem is we see the change that has been wrought on Dalinar. We are so invested in what a good person he's become that when Elikar starts saying the words, it's like we automatically project that onto Elikar. If Dalinar can change, so can Elikar. Indeed, the entire premise of the Stormlight Archive is that the magic powers are predicated on you being broken. The magic powers fill up the broken spots. It is such a hopeful and inspiring message that 
no matter how broken we are as people, no matter how flawed, no matter how many times we've done things we wish we hadn't done, you can change, you can become better. And I think that's a very personal message for everyone who's reading it. And I've seen people really identify with that message. So now it's not just Moash killing Elokar, it's Moash killing Elokar as he is saying the words. As he is saying the words, it makes it so much more emotional. And it makes us think, man, what could have been? He was changing, he was in the process. Moash didn't know that if we think of it logically, but it doesn't matter. Our emotions already tied to it. Moash doesn't just take Elokar's life. He takes the opportunity of us to see another radiant. He takes away the opportunity of us living through Elokar as he learns to change and become a better person. Also though, Moash kicks uh, Elokar's three-year-old son, which is just really uncool, and then kills the dude's father in front of him at three years old, which is just something that's really hard for me to get over since I have young children. So. Like that isn't helping Moash's case, that's a side note. And if we continue with the idea that our hatred for Moash is really a literary device, we can go back to junior high when we were studying Shakespeare and learning about foils. When we talked about Tybalt and Mercutio being foils to Romeo and Shakespeare or Draco Malfoy and Harry Potter being foils, in the same way I think that Kaladin and Moash are set up as foils. They are very similar in a lot of ways. They bond over so many things in the way of kings. Um, their past and their histories and their prejudices and their desires and wants. And then we see them go two completely different paths or so far they are. And it's a really great literary device. It's a great device to see how two people who can be so similar go different ways. And I think that's intentional. Brandon Sanderson is a good writer and I think he realizes that you need that kind of tension. So after all this discussion, what's the answer to the question? Did Moash do anything wrong? Yes. Yes, he did. I did get out of this exercise a much deeper understanding of why some people don't believe Moash did anything wrong. And honestly, all of the discussion that they had with me really softened my opinions towards Moash and made me view the whole scene very differently. However, I, as a reader, am too tied to Kaladin's viewpoint. I'm too tied to the mo emotion of the theme of the novels being change. And even though I could try to force myself to change it, I don't want to. I enjoy those feelings. I enjoy rooting for the characters I love and their storylines. And so for me, Moash did do something wrong. He shouldn't have taken vengeance. This isn't a question maybe in real life if vengeance are not as good, but in the novels, it's very clear that we're trying to get over vengeance and we're trying to go for a higher ideal. And so in the course of this novel, yes, Moash did do something wrong. And I'm gonna continue disliking that scene so much when I read it and disliking the direction that he is going. And I'm just not gonna agree with it. Okay, so I want you to tell me what you think. Do you think Moash did anything wrong? How did you feel when you read that Oathbringer scene? Did any of these arguments sway you to think something differently? I also wanna know if you want Moash to have a redemption arc or not. I personally don't think I want him to have a redemption arc. Not that I want him to go into some evil territory, but it'd be interesting if he never becomes a Radiant just to see what goes on with him. And I'm super excited to hear where his story goes in Rhythm of War. So tell me what you think. Tell me what you think is gonna happen with him in Rhythm of War. What do you want to happen? Do you want him to become a Radiant? Do you want him to become a villain? Let me know by leaving a comment. And if you like this video, please subscribe and like. And if you wanna see what I'm currently reading, you can check me out on Instagram at bookborn.reviews. I'll see you next time. Bye.